when we look at the world today, there's got to be a lot of unhappy people in it. There's got to be a lot of people who just have no idea that they have any sense of worth anymore because of all the strife and the, and the things that we're seeing. So I think if we start with each one of us bettering ourselves, whether it's our mindset, you know, mind, body, spirit kind of thing, if we can better ourselves. We're going to change the world a little bit because we're all striving to do something better and striving starts with yourself. Good day, this is George Furry and welcome to another Martial Arts Media Business Podcast episode. Today I am with Andrea Harkins and I had to practice that just to make sure I got the pronunciation the American way. How are you today, Andrea? I'm, I'm doing great. How are you? I'm being awesome. Cool. So uh, we're going we're gonna to talk about a lot of inspirational topics and Andrea's got a uh, wealth of knowledge within the martial arts space and she's on, a, on quite a mission to make a positive impact in the world, a positive impact in the world. So we're going we're gonna to have a good conversation and as always, just see where this goes. So Andrea, first question would be, of course, who is Andrea? Hawkins. Well, thanks for asking that. I am also known out there as the martial arts woman, which is the title of my first book, but really just something I've evolved into. And my mission in what I do, which includes writing books, writing for magazines, outreach, uh, teaching martial arts, practicing martial arts, really is to make the world a better place. And I use martial arts as my sort of symbol or my metaphor for living an empowered life and reminding people that they can strive for more, that they can uh, reach their goals and their dreams. They just have to work for them. And so I really reach out as much as I can in different ways, whether it's through a podcast or writing and, and appearances or whatever I can do to really remind people that. Uh, even if they're not a martial artist, they can have that martial art mindset, which is so powerful and so important in today's world where everything is negative. We have to remind ourselves that we are positive and we can make a difference in the world. And that's sort of what I try to do. So where did this all begin? You're from, I mean, obviously there's a was a big transition, your martial arts career, and then going on this mission. Let's, let's start with the martial arts background, foundations. Sure. I began martial arts in 1989 with my husband, who sort of dragged me to my first class. I wasn't really interested in going. I went for him and hated it in the beginning. It was just a little too crazy for me, uh, kicks and punches and throws, and uh, it was a Tang Sudo system. So... After not too long, though, I really started to like it, and I thought, hey, I, I like this, and I was pretty good at it, and I had never been athletic. I was 26 when I started, and realizing that I had some kind of potential as far as, you know, being an athlete or doing something like this was <clears throat> really a great, a great thing for me to learn. I ended up loving martial arts, and I just continued and received my black belt, second degree black belt back in the 90s, I think. And I've just been practicing and teaching ever since. And so that's how the story began. And it just continued. And about five years ago, six years ago, um, I had written a, one article for a martial art industry magazine. And another blogger on Facebook had contacted me. His name's Andrew, Ando Mirzwa. And he contacted me. He's known as Sensei Ando on Facebook. And he said, why? I looked on the Internet to find out about you, and I couldn't find anything. How come? And I said, well, I'm not, on, I'm not out there. Why would I be out there? He said, well, you're a writer, and you're a martial artist. And why don't you put the two together? And he convinced me to start my blog, which is called The Martial Arts Woman. And uh, I started this blog, and it just was a nice little popular happy blog that people ended up liking. So I started making the transition there, although I had previously written for a martial art industry magazine that, you know, kind of put me out there a little bit. And then from there, other magazines just started asking me to write for them. Different topics. I write for Martial Art Illustrated UK, 
I write for Martial Art Business in Australia. I write for um, the Martial Art Guardian in the UK, and I write for several magazines here in the States. And it was just, they all had different perspectives and invited me to write columns for them. I started writing for my local newspaper, a positivity martial art column. So it just kind of blossomed much more than I ever expected. And then, of course, I started speaking more. I started reaching out on social media more. So I have a big presence there. And I just, uh, I just found that it was a good niche for me. Okay, cool. Now, be- before I go to the mission part, I want to I want to ask you something on the actual blogging because uh, we, we run a program called the Martial Arts Media Academy, and in that, a big component that I see that's missing in the martial arts space is content creation. Um, for marketing, there's a big focus on ad creation, which which is very, very important and you need to obviously have ads out there and and good offers to get students in all the time. A big problem with that, I find, is that when you only focus on that and you don't focus on the giving aspect and the content creation aspect, then you are always just chasing the next ad and you are one ad away from not having leads or students coming through your door. Whereas with the content creation, and I'm sure you would have found this having a blog over the years, it's a very slow burn because at the beginning you put content up and it's like nobody responds and then all of a sudden it it slowly gets traction but once it does, it's got that snowball down the mountain effect and you can't stop it. It's just got this own audience without being so dependent on all the social platforms. So that's a bit of a a background to my actual question. So my question is, and I'm always trying to motivate school owners to get in front of the camera, um, I guess get in front of the camera mostly for the content creation. Blogging, of course, being, you know, you do the writing and that's a written format, but any form of way of expressing and creating valuable content. So the actual question is, how did you... How did you sort of formulate a good way to really express your experience and thoughts and everything that you, your mission through your blog and through writing? Well, for me, um, I use everyday situations in my own life as a way to reach out to people. And my blog has no ads on it. I don't use it to make money. I use it so people get to know me. So when I have a book or when I have uh, something I want to talk about, they're ready to listen because they trust me and they know what to expect. But the blog content I use is, look, I I had sort of a difficult time getting through a situation. And this is how I fix that. And I usually have a little martial arts story to tell. Um, so most, a lot of my inspirational and motivational content is simply from my life. And that makes it very easy for me to have something to say all the time because, you know, we all go through good and bad ups and downs constantly. And I can just pluck one of those situations out and say, um, you know, I, I had trouble doing this or I was, I was sick and I couldn't, I couldn't work out and I felt, you know, down about myself. I wasn't sure when I would get better. But, you know, martial arts reminded me that as long as I push through, I'll be okay. As long as I just, you know, if I can break a board, if I can learn a new skill that I've never learned before in martial arts, well, I can certainly break through little barriers in life. I can certainly learn new skills in in life. And so I constantly have this sort of play between what we all face each and every day and, and how martial arts has reminded me in some way that I'm a capable person, that I need to stop worrying and just push through like I always do. So for me, content, I have so much content because there's so much going on in my life all the time. And sometimes I use other people's lives. You know, somebody will talk to me about a problem or a situation. And uh, I usually have a solution thanks to martial arts and, and what I've learned. So I just apply the two together. Um, and sometimes I also do talk about being an instructor or being a martial artist and what to expect or if you want to try it and that kind of thing. But often my content is really about life. So it comes down to 
from from what I gather from what you're saying, real just honesty, um, not not trying to portray a situation for the way people might want to perceive it, but really just this is me, yeah. this is my situation. And mm -hmm. this is how I overcame it. That yeah. And so, what, did you find that hard to really get to that point where you actually will? Um, and and I'm not sure if this is every martial arts, you know, for what I was referring to in our program of that's the exact way to go. But there is a big element to it because you've got to really put yourself out there and not be. Um, afraid of opinions and crit critique. Yeah. So, yes. So how how did you how did you what is that sort of how you started? Just from the get go, you were just comfortable expressing yourself, or did you start the blog and then did it slowly evolve to like a raw type honesty where you can just express what's on your mind? No, I think I, I started it that way, but I always knew in the beginning that there was a risk of people criticizing me, not liking what I was saying or doing, because that's going to happen in social media, it's going to happen in blogging. And I was a little uncomfortable at first, but then I thought, you know what, I, I have nothing to hide. I'm just a genuine person. And I want to remind people out there that, you know, I'm not one of those people way up here who, you know, just pretends that they relate to what you're doing or whatever. No, I, I just believe in being honest and truthful. Of course, I'm not sharing every detail of my personal life. A lot of times it's just a concept or an idea. You know, how do you, how do you get to me more positive? How can, how can you learn how to overcome your fears? And those kind of things where I can just insert little bits of stories about myself and, and funny things that have happened to me or what my fears were and how I was able to overcome them. Certainly in martial arts, you face a lot of fears when you have to, you know, break your first board or or do your first flip or whatever it might be. And, and so again, I just apply that. So it was not a difficult thing for me. Uh, and I did expect some people not to like it. Um, but really, I haven't had that much negativity about it in the past few years, really, since I started here and there. Being a woman in the martial arts, uh, you know, another topic to address is when you put yourself out there as a woman in martial arts, that you're going to get some backlash from people and you're also going to get treated a certain way sometimes. There's still, you know, discrimination. There's still men who treat you um, in a sexual way because you're a martial artist or, or whatever it might be. And so that really has been the, the bigger burden from all of this than, than the backlash or somebody not caring about what I had to say. So I think... Um, I think the blogging for any business, though, is really important as long as you're genuine. Nobody really wants that that kind of stock stuff. You know, they want to know a little bit about your school or tell me, you know, what happened with one of your students today and why that's important or meaningful. And I think if you can focus on those kinds of genuine things in martial arts or in your school, your program, whatever you're doing, that that's going to capture the attention of your potential um, fans or your potential students or that kind of thing. So I hope I answered your question. I think I went in five different directions on that one, but <laughs> no, that's that's awesome. I, I, I actually I do want to I do want to ask that, and and this is not to go sort of on a on a negative track because I obviously as a male I want to understand the 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 different dynamics that a lady would go through in a martial arts journey. And I had uh, Jess Fraser on the show second time uh, last week. And she, uh, the first episode, she was talking about, because she was a, a bit of a digital uh, jujitsu nomad. She was just traveling the world and her, her life was going to all the different schools. And she addressed a few of the topics that, um, the I wouldn't say discrimination, but was just very different for her um, as a female and getting a few back bit of backlash from a few instructors where perhaps didn't feel that welcome so in a in a male dominated sport how different is it for a lady to go through the martial arts journey do you, do you find that there's it I mean 
for the most part, is it all good? Or is it just sort of the, the negatives? Is it just sort of a, a little bit from here and a little bit from here, if, if, that, if that makes sense? That makes sense. And, and in all honesty, my experiences have generally been very good. Martial art training, I haven't had any issues really. And when I started in the 80s, of course, there were a lot more men than women. There were only a couple of women in classes and things like that. And I think what I noticed more were really just the men showing off more than any kind of discrimination or, or difficulty with me being there. Men don't and do that ever. No, I know that. I know. This was this was a long time ago. Right, that doesn't of course. happen anymore. We've evolved as a species. <laughs> so I think other than that, I really never had a, a negative experiences in my training. But what I can say was the negativity came out more in my presence on social media uh, because there are not a lot of women out there. And I'm really not negative about men. I love training with men. Um, I don't have any issues with that at all. What happens on social media where my problems came in were just keyboard warrior kind of people who were either, you know, insinuating I didn't know anything or, you know, trying to ask me out on a date or, you know, just weird stuff, you know. And uh, it, it's just, it was really more from that. And I had to block a lot of people and block a lot of men and, but not, you know, I, I don't want to put all men in that bucket because really most of my experiences have been very positive. We as women have to just face the fact that we're, uh, we are women and, you know, we try to be beautiful. We, we try to be happy. We try to be all of those things that we feel like society wants us to be. And so in doing that, we have to kind of face those situations and figure out a good way to handle it. And but I certainly have heard different stories from different women who have had both good and bad experiences with uh, being out there in the martial arts. I think what we have to remember is that men and women are different. And this is just my perspective. And this is one of the things that I sometimes get backlash on saying. But we are different. So we practice differently. We have a different mindset. We may learn the same things from the same instructors. But we see things a little differently. We're mothers, we're sisters, we're daughters. We have a different mindset overall. Yes, we can, we can take all of that away and go into a tournament or go into a situation, a self-defense situation, and really strip ourselves of those things for those moments. But in real reality, that's who we are. And I always say, you know, if there's a husband and wife, you don't expect them to be the same. They're both spouses. They're both married to each other, but they are not the same. They have different roles and they have different personalities and different ways of seeing the world or a brother and a sister, you know, any opposite like that. We're going to be different. So I think being in a male dominated activity is challenging sometimes, but it really is about you as a woman or you as a practitioner and uh, to do it your own way. And as long as you follow your own passion, your own calling, your own training, then that's all you need to worry about. Awesome. So I want to get to the mission part, um, but I have one more question just on, on this topic. What would you say to, because I might replay this section to my, my partner who I try to push into martial arts, but um it didn't work what would you what what would you how do i how do i phrase this question for what would you tell ladies who are thinking about trying martial arts but they are hesitant because it's a male dominated sport well i would tell ladies that first of all nowadays i i don't know that i would call it male dominated a lot of class a lot of classes have half women, half men, or half girls, half boys. It's True. really come a long way from when I started. And it really, you take a martial art because you have an interest in it, not because there are men or women there. You just, if, you, if you're interested in it, that's what you do. Uh, and I would just tell them that if I can do it, and this is something I say all the time, if I can do it, you can do it. 
I was just 26 year old woman when I started and just discovered that I enjoyed it. So like anything in life, you have to try what you're interested in. Doesn't mean you'll stick with it forever. Maybe you'll like it, maybe you won't, but try it. Uh, you know, it's just like trying a new food or trying a new movie or trying on a new pair of shoes. If, if there's something you're interested in, you, you give it a, a try and see what happens. There's no harm done. Um, in fact, I'm starting right now a new program. I actually moved from where I was living in the States to an, across the country. And I'm starting a program now called um, Martial Art Concepts which is geared for people who have an interest in martial arts but never knew what to expect. And it's going to have just a very simple martial art program, I guess you might say, where you're going to stretch, you're going to warm up, you're going to learn kicks, you're going to learn punches, you're going to learn blocks and drills and uh, self-defense and some breathing techniques. And you're going to have a taste of martial arts and a, and a workout all in one. So sometimes there's things like that that you can try. Also, self-defense is very important for women. So I would highly recommend uh, it could save your life. So I think that makes it worth it. Awesome. So why not do it? <laughs> That's right. Cool. So, Andrea, tell me about your, just, just expand a bit more on your mission. So you you reach this point where you really want to you want to make a positive impact in the world and you use martial arts as your metaphor big task so how do you how do you go about that where do you start and where do you see it going uh, well i started just through the blog and then for me i started taking baby steps because i wrote the first the first book and I knew that in order to sell a book nowadays, you really need a social media presence. You need to be out there. And I decided that I would try to really market myself on social media. And I didn't know really what to expect. And in fact, I hated posting photos of myself on mar uh, doing martial arts on, on any social media because I thought, you know, somebody is always going to look at it and say, your foot's not right. Your knee's not up. You're not standing the right way. Your arm should be straight, not bent. You know, I just, I just really didn't want to do it. But I thought, okay, well, this is how I'm supposed to do it. So I started posting pictures of myself doing kicks <laughs> and putting little, um, sort of little inspirational quotes or reminders on them. You know, here's me kicking, but you know, kick, kick through your fears or whatever it might be, or you know, a little, little blog type thing to go with the photos. And it just, it, it was again genuine and it was again showing that this middle-aged woman can, can still do this. If I can do it, you can do it. So these are some of the places where I started to really push, um, push my mission a little bit more. And so between the blogging and the, and the writing and the photos, and the social media, I started to get a little bit of a following of people saying, I'm so glad you said that. You know, I, I was having a down day today and I just, I felt like I couldn't get through it today or I felt like I couldn't reach my goals. And you reminded me that it's okay if you have a bad day every now and again, you just have to keep pushing through. So it was these little messages that people started taking to heart. And now when they read something, they'll always, a lot of them comment, say, thank you so much for this, or I, I'm so happy that you understand how I'm feeling, and that kind of thing. So it's almost like a little bit of a, a therapy session for us all, right? I get the chance to share, and people get the chance to, you know, vent or, or read something inspirational and positive for them. And when we look at the world today, there's got to be a lot of unhappy people in it. There's got to be a lot of people who just have no idea that they have any sense of worth anymore because of all the strife and the, and the things that we're seeing. So I think if we start with each one of us bettering ourselves, whether it's our mindset, you know, mind, body, spirit kind of thing, if we can better ourselves. We're going to change the world a little bit because we're all striving to do something better and striving starts with yourself to better yourself before you can make change around you. But, you know, if I can be happy and positive 
somebody around me might start to feel happy and positive too or think, How, why are you feeling so good about yourself or so good about life? And I can share with them. And so that's sort of how the mission works for me is just the more I can spread it, the more I can tell people that they are important. They are worthy of reaching their dreams and goals. They are special. They're unique. And when I can do that and people start feeling good about themselves, then we're starting to change the dynamic of, of the negativity. And so that's really, it's a, it's a lofty, lofty goal. And maybe I'll only touch a few people's lives, but I figure that's better than nothing. That's a very good way to put it. But it's, it's, um, it's a topic that's it's come up before. Uh, Bogdan Rosu is another person I interviewed from Romania, and his whole, his whole philosophy is personal development with martial arts. So um, to mm-hmm. combine the two, that, um, and, and for me, and as, as I mentioned to him, the, the reason I really got hooked to martial arts is because that's what put it together for me. I've always been on this personal development mission, um, but it was only when I started doing martial arts that it became a physical and not just a mental. So yeah. um, it, it was the change in, in body and, and focus that really, um, I guess, as a person that likes to learn and try and better himself all the time, um, that's that's what was a, a big hook for me. And it, it could be different for, obviously it's different for everyone. Some people yeah. go for self-defense and go for this. But ultimately, I mean, you're doing martial arts to better yourself. I mean, if you, if you break it down to that, you're taking the step into this direction to become a better you, um, no matter what the reasoning is. So, yeah. so having, having, I guess, for a martial arts instructor to really have that in mind, which I look, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm probably preaching to the choir because I'm talking to martial arts school owners for the most part. But I mean, it's it's just, I, th- I think it's just so important to have that in mind that that's that's really what it's about. It's it's so about the personal development and positive impact that you can make beyond the the kicking and the punches, of course. Right, and if we can take that, and what I try to do is take exactly what you just said about myself, my students, uh, my peers, and present it to people who are not martial artists. Present that concept or that mindset that if you better yourself in some way, and of course I say martial arts is a great are a great way to do that. But if you better yourself in some way, whether it's you know a more po- positive attitude, whether it's working out. You need to start applying these things to your life, and you'll see a change. And uh, so my mission goes even beyond who we are as martial artists, out into the public, the general public of people, because everybody loves martial arts. And if you say you're a martial artist and they're not, they're like, oh, that's so cool. You can kick up here, or you can do this. And yes, I can. I can do that. And and you can do that, too. So um, I think... Uh, that's a great way to look at it. And that's what we should all be striving for as martial artists or instructors are to better ourselves, better the people around us, present a, a positive outlook on life, uh, let people know that they uh, are brave and that they can reach their goals. And I think we're doing a fantastic job if we can do all of that. Fantastic. So Andrea, what's the, what is the, what is the ultimate outcome for you? On your of your mission uh, that's I, I think um, just every single day to make a positive change every single day um, so what's the final o- outcome I don't know what the final one is I just know that every day I strive to make a positive impact in some way whether it's you know talking to someone like you or just smiling at someone as I walk by or reminding people how great martial arts are or whatever it could be. Um, Every day I try to do that. And I think in the end, um, if I can just know that I did my best to change the world in some positive way, then that really is my goal in itself. It's just really to, to keep going, to keep writing, to keep sharing. And I'll do that as long as I can. Awesome. Fantastic. Really inspiring to speak to you, Andrea. Thank you. And Andrea, Andrea. 
Anything's fine. I think I've gone to my default pronunciation. <laughs> so, okay. so you've got a fantastic blog and books. Do you mind just sharing a, a couple of minutes for anybody that wants to learn more about you, support your mission, and have a read of all your awesome content and everything? How can yeah. people get in touch with you and find out more about you? All right. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, my blog is called The Martial Arts Woman. So it's themartialartswoman.com. It's free. It's just got all kinds of different comment uh, content on there. Um, my book, The Martial Arts Woman, which had more than 30 contributors all over the world, women all over the world, who wrote about what it means to be a woman in the martial arts or what they had to do just to learn martial arts or how they applied martial arts to a self-defense situation. They're really amazing stories that you would never hear. When I started getting these stories in, I started to realize there's a whole, there's a whole chapter of life out there that people have never heard about because they've never heard these stories that are amazing and inspirational. And I also wrote in the book a lot about my experiences being in the martial arts so long. It's a book for everybody. It's very motivational. And uh, that is on Amazon, The Martial Arts Woman. And my second book, Martial Art Inspirations for Everyone, is also on Amazon. And that really explains my mission and the name of it, I guess. Um, it is daily reflections that you can read a page long that do exactly what I was talking about earlier, taking some of life's challenges and putting them together with a martial art kind of solution that we can all, all use and just and it's inspirational. And the third book that I'm working on right now is How to Start Your Own Martial Art Program. And this is a book about not starting a big dojo or a big school. This is about, this is for the people who want to teach on the side, you know, while they're working their full-time job or in their retirement or whatnot. And so that one will be coming out hopefully sometime this year. So please, you know, give one of them a read and, and let me know what you think. And you can contact me through the blog, themartialartswoman.com. There's a place there to contact me. So I hope to hear from some of your audience. And uh, even if we just chat for a few minutes, that would be awesome. Awesome. Fantastic. Andrea, thank you very much. And we'll link all, all the books and the blog on the, in the transcript. Thank you very much. Thank you. I had a wonderful time, and thanks so much for having me. You're welcome. Speak soon. Okay. Thanks.